How you doing, everybody? It's your boy, Wardy. And as you can see, we're back at it talking about the Amazons. And folks, it's long overdue. We got to have that Jeff McNeil discussion. We got to get into why McHits looks like he's about to be McGon McOut of here. Doing my best Gary impression with that one, with the wordplay. Jeff McNeil has done so many things to warrant why he's no longer an everyday player for the Mets at the moment. Or should I say lack thereof and things he should be properly doing. And there are various reasons as to why Jeff McNeil's not a matter of if but when he'll be parted with the Mets, whether that's by the traded line or the absolute latest this offseason. Again, one thing is certain, McNeil's time to fly and scroll in Queens looks like it appears to be coming to an end. Why exactly is this? Who can replace him currently at second base for short-term and long-term vision? And everything in between is what we're about to break down here in the video. But before I do, make sure to smash that like and subscribe button for your boy as it is the easiest and best way to support the channel. Thank you all so much in advance for doing that. And again, thank you all so much in advance advance for hearing from today's video sponsor and how you guys again by doing the simple steps today have a great chance to win a Mets jersey of any player you currently want that's active on the roster let's hear from none other than our great friends at BetUS Michael Vick at BetUS.com catch an incredible 125% sign up bonus on your first three deposits plus 10% gambler's insurance BetUS my online sports book and casino I know you're probably asking yourself, Wardy, did you really just say Mets jersey giveaway? Yes, I did. We have given away plenty jerseys, including signed jerseys like Brandon Nimmo signed jersey. Over the past six months, a year on the channel, we're giving away another jersey for you guys. This time, again, a player on the roster currently. Any guy that you want. Again, a roughly $200 jersey that your boy's paying out of pocket just to give to one of you lucky winners. And all you have to do to enter today, folks, is the simple steps. And we will be announcing a winner sometime middle next week from the time of recording this. I'm currently recording this late night on June 5th. So I'm going to be placing a bet for you guys to see here to give you guys an idea of what we do with BetUS here for upcoming slated games for June 6th at the time of recording this too and as you guys can see here we have the New York Yankees matching up here against yes the Minnesota Twins and I have been absolutely loving the Yanks not loving them because they've been playing great because I'm a Mets fan but loving them with how favorable that they have been betting wise with our amazing sponsor and the best sports book out there America's number one sports book bet us and as you can see they're the money line favorite here for June 6th the slate I'm gonna hammer them on the money line at right I'm gonna put 40 down to win me 2759 good luck to you all that tale again bet responsibly bet at your own risk i don't know when this video will come out so it might not even be valid by then but no less all you guys gotta do is the two simple steps sign up to bet us today by clicking the link down below in this video at your earliest convenience sign up place one singular bet of any kind whether it's a one dollar bet a thousand dollar bet doesn't matter to me just make sure you place a bet and send your boy wardy a screenshot to his email again that email is provided for you all in the video description of this video it is draw d-r-a-w-t number seven at proton mail p-r-o-t-o-n mail.com just send me a screenshot of proof that you are signed up to bet us and place to bet and that's it you're automatically entered and you guys will have a fantastic chance to win a Mets jersey of any player on the roster that you wish for so good luck to you all and as always shout out to our great friends at bet us but hopping back into this one now folks let's talk about jeff mcneil why exactly are we even having this discussion well again it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that jeff mcneil has been far from the 2022 contact king that we saw with a 326 batting average again the nl batting champ the universal batting champ why has jeff mcneil fallen from grace so much since then and i've said this a thorough amount of times on the channel over the past calendar year but i will repeat this it goes so much in hand with chef mcneil's approach as we know this is a slap hitter this is a guy that when right loves to pull the ball of course there in the hole down the third first baseline would love to go opposite field and that's where we have a heavier point of emphasis here right because this is a jeff mcneil that went from being a 2022 batting champ being signed to a 50 plus million dollar contract extension by billy big bucks yet again another contract by billy epler then instead of a billy masterclass it really is a disaster class in hindsight you know hindsight's 2020 but we all know that signing a guy already past 30 as a contact hitter when the game is deviating farther and farther away from contact slap hitting for a guy that again is already peaked in his career not the brightest move but it was a homegrown talent that's why billy upper did it but for jeff mcneil what worked so well in the 2022 season was taking advantage hitting the ball where they ain't right the 2022 mets were so great with their small ball mentality of course hitting for infield dribblers or getting out of the infield to slapping the ball down the third baseline especially as a lefty batter which mcneil did so well 
The problem here is that since the Universal shift has basically ended entering the 2023 season and beyond, guys like Jeff McNeil especially simply do not have that gap down the third baseline that they would otherwise be accustomed to. So it has made them more of a pull hitter mentality. And for a Jeff that we all know loves to golf, that golf swing has been full-fledged on, again, right before our very eyes, how many times consistently for the past year plus. And to give you guys a true example of why this is a major problem with Jeff McNeil and the Mets right now, I'm going to deep dive to you all the numbers here because this is a Jeff McNeil that, again, has fallen so far from grace as a 2022 batting champ that is now riding the pine for a 34-year-old infield veteran and Jose Iglesias because the bar is that low with the Mets at the second base position. And Carlos Mendoza, David Stearns, they are already beyond fed up with Jeff McNeil. Not only his antics already always throwing F-bombs in his bat down the first baseline because he can't provide a quality at bat to save his life consistently right now, but two, just because Billy Upper signed you to that contract extension does not mean that we have to deal with that. This is not the Wilpons era where we have to ride these guys out until the very end of their contracts. We just cut Omar Narvaez. We parted ways with plenty of guys of recent to make abrupt immediate changes to make this team better and competitive here in 2020, uh, 2024. And Jeff McNeil now, who has not started in his past three games at the time of recording this, Four straight against lefty pitching, in which he has thrived throughout his career. The Mets are now 5-0 and this season when Jeff McNeil does not start a game. And that isn't an obvious flag. Red flag is to say, hey, McNeil's part of the problem. I don't know what is. But to give you guys further explanation, an example here, let's break down it a little bit further here, shall we? Because, again, there are a lot of things that stick out here. And shout out, as always, to our other amazing sponsor on the channel, Sober MLB. We'll get into them here shortly. But before we do, I got to tell you guys, look at McNeil's numbers. This is per fan graphs. The 2024 season for the 32-year-old batter, of course, can play second base, uh, can play second base, can play left field. 57 games a season. We are looking at three home runs, 20 runs scored, 14 RBIs, three stolen bags, a 227 average, a 296 OBP, a 320 slug for a 100 WRC plus. In case you guys don't know what that means, 100 WRC plus simply means he is league average right across the board. If you're 100, you're league average. If you're above, you're above league average. If you're below, you're below league average as a batter. Jeff McNeil in three of his past four seasons, if we exclude the brilliance that he had in 2022, Jeff McNeil has been at best a league average batter. And I actually apologize because the 100 WRC plus is not for this season. That was for last season when McNeil was underwhelming and of course started turn things on with the Mets season was long dead long of course a team that was just trying to leg out games because we had games to be played after the trade deadline when they sold off big he actually has 85 WRC plus this season so 15% below league average we're looking at a negative offensive and defensive player for a 0.0 war here what is there that Jeb McNeil can provide for you that a guy either in the minor leagues or a simple pickup waiver option can't provide outside the defensive versatility Jeb McNeil has went so far from bringing the batter that we have loved and appreciated the K rate again has fluctuated mightily we saw there it peaked in 2021 where Jeff McNeil had a very underwhelming season there with a 91 WRC plus a 13.6 K percentage 2022 down to 10.4 2023 actually his best of his career outside of his rookie year at 10 even this season has picked up though 11.2 percent but Jeff McNeil is not only striking out at a stronger clip than we have seen a little bit in recent years he is not playing the ball in play whatsoever this is a Jeff McNeil that looks so lost every single time that he is out there. When he does have his three hit games, they are so few and far in between. He has deviated so much from being a true 300 contact hitter where Carlos Mendoza said it best. He doesn't like, doesn't like that he's lifting the ball too much. Even with a guy that's had a ground ball percentage of roughly 40% this season, Jeff McNeil from the eye test alone, we have seen him lift the ball so much opposite field because he's behind on that pitch and he flies out, allows he fly out to left field. Or when he really does drive one, if he's not in the state of Ohio where he's hit all of his three home runs this season, two of which in Cleveland, one of which in Cincinnati, Jeb McNeil has no power whatsoever to warrant any type of power swing. Now, whether that comes from the golfing that he does religiously every single year or not, I'm not sure. What I know is Jeb McNeil has had nothing short of a piss poor approach at the plate for multiple years on end now. And contact hitting is only going to get you so far. And when you can't even hit contact as a contact hitter, and yet you still have over $30 million owed on your contract, this is where we 
have a major problem, folks. This is exactly why Jeff McNeil will be parted with, even if the Mets decide to eat a chunk of that salary. Steve Cohen has done it plenty with other players in the past. Hence, a James McCann, for example, Robinson Cano. They will do it with others. And with the immediate options, the Mets currently have their minor leagues. Again, what are we doing here? Unless Jeff McNeil proves that he can be something more than a true utility player, because that is absolute best what he's peaking at right now off the bench for certain matchups. And again, coming in as defensive late replacement, there is nothing to justify giving Jeff McNeil any consistent playing time whatsoever, especially when a man on a small minor league contract is out playing a guy in a short sample size, a 34-year-old veteran in Jose Iglesias. And we're going to get to more on Iglesias, Luis Angel Cunha, and everything in between there here shortly, folks. But in the meantime, while we're on here, let's talk about our great friends of Sower MLB just for a second, folks, because Sower MLB is the best MLB fantasy game out there. In case you guys and gals don't know, you can enter weekly tournaments by drafting your team. You can buy, sell, and trade your cards on the marketplace with your friends or with people online. And how you play in these tournaments each week is indicative on how the players perform in real life. So as you can see here, these are the two tournaments that I've been rocking. I'm currently ranked just over 2,000 out of roughly 11,000 people in my all-star tournament, in which those are free cards that you don't need to buy or anything like that. Then we have limited cards to my right that you do need to actually purchase to utilize. I'm going to show you here shortly how the marketplace works. But my one team, absolutely deadly outside of Edwin Diaz being on the injured list, and I didn't have another reliever option. Zach Wheeler, Tyler Glass now, Brandon Nimmo, Ali Rutschman, Rutschman, uh, Mr. Gunnar Henderson, Joey Ortiz, those guys had a solid series. Over here, nothing too crazy on this team as well. Again, Alex Bregman prior to, prior to his injury looked good. Got nothing from Adolis Garcia. George Kirby looked sharp. So these are the latest teams that I have, and the victories, the rewards that I'll be getting out of these tournaments will be upgrade cards for my team, or if I do better and say really rank higher in these tournaments, I can win hundreds, if not thousands of dollars cash prizes with our great friends at Sower MLB. And to give you guys an example on how the marketplace works, I'm going to per purchase a Jake Diekman card for you all right now, especially because I need another reliever option, not named Edwin Diaz. Diekman, even though he's been Jekyll and Hyde, he is the option that we are going to go with, folks. So let's purchase this card and let's make that happen. So yep, again, this is going to be an ETH for my wallet there. We're going to get that purchase done. And that'll do her. Here we go, folks. Uh, Jake Diekman has officially been acquired to the Wardy NYM squad, and I will utilize him in my next lineup of tournaments that begins this Friday. There is the Jake Diekman card. You'll love to see it. And as always, shout out to our great friends of Sower MLB. Make sure to sign up today by clicking the link down below. That way, you two get a great opportunity to win awesome giveaways. We give away Mets tickets on the channel of recent, along with others. Be on the lookout, all just for signing up and drafting your team today. Again, for free, should you wish, with our great friends. Friends at so are MLB, the best fantasy game out there. But to hop back into this one, folks, what I really want to make a point of emphasis here regarding Jeff McNeil and Jose Iglesias in particular are the following things. You see how I'm showing highlights here to my right? If you're wondering, Wardy, those are kind of old highlights. Why are you running highlights from the 2022 season? If you're wondering why, that's the last time Jeff McNeil was a competent hitter. Again, even last season with his 270 average and his still sub 800 OPS, Jeff McNeil was underwhelming for the vast majority of the season last year, a 333 average, a 378 uh, slug versus this is 2022 peak Jeff McNeil, 326 average, 382 on base percentage, 454 slug. So what does that tell you when he has been at best of the league average batter three of his past four years in the league? What you saw in 2022 was a peak of Jeff McNeil and not something that will be replicated, at least not during his time at Queens. That ship has sailed, is long gone, and for various reasons. And between... McNeil getting stuck in this pull hitter mentality, and honestly, and I, I'm I'm sorry, I don't I don't mean this a wrong way, but at first I loved Jeff McNeil's attitude, I love the snarl, I love the f bombs. It was very entertaining throughout his first couple of years of play. But to be a guy that's consistently doing that, still though, every single time that he's out there, that's a bigger red flag. We all know the personality, we all know kind of the ups and downs that he's had in the clubhouse, going back to the Rat and Raccoon incident. Just how he's handled himself as a player has again fluctuated throughout his Mets tenure. And I'm not putting all the blame on Jeff. I know it's a very difficult thing to do to play every day. Again, even while they play a kid's game, even while they're making millions, doesn't change the fact that, again, it's still a lot that is going on as an everyday player in a 162 season. So giving Jeff the benefit of the doubt as the human, as a person that I respect, certainly as a guy that, again, went out of his way, him, his uh, team invited me to his charity event last year. I'm no ill well with Jeff McNeil, but I'm always going to call it how it is. And when you're a guy that is not playing nearly to your caliber, is only on the roster 
roster right now justified because of your contract, it's very hard for me to try to put you on a pedestal and be on roof for you, which I've done plenty. I need to see results. So does Carlos Mendoza. So does David Stearns. That is why they've had this cutthroat mentality with the roster early on this season because they do not think this year is a loss. They do not think this year is a waste, no matter how much you Mets fans may think otherwise as they currently sit eight games below 500, but just three and a half out of a wild card spot at the time of us recording this. So when you have Jose Iglesias again, get the call up, feeling like a rookie again, balling out for you, having a three plus hit night in this national series, having multiple RBIs already, having a double in his last game at the time of us recording here. So many bright spots with Jose Iglesias. And yes, while he's definitely a defensive liability between himself and Jeff at second base, if that bat is propelling him enough to warrant the Mets continue to roll and really again, if it ain't broke, why fix it mentality? Why should you warrant Jeff McNeil back in the lineup? The fact that the Mets have went out of their way to take McNeil out of the lineup when he has done so well throughout his career every year against lefty pitching especially really tells me this is not about the numbers. This is not about the splits. This is about the reality. You have underperformed for a year plus straight now. You have underperformed through your past four years. Then this is just who you are, Jeff, that we know. We know that at your absolute best, you are a 300 contact hitter, but how many runs are you actually driving in? How much of a difference do you really make defensively for a guy that again is no longer that true gold glove caliber defender that we would see consistently at second base or looking like an absolute beauty in left field at times I have admired and loved Jeff McNeil for so many different reasons throughout his career but again there's a shelf life with everything and I'm pretty sure that shelf life has expired at least a year now if you're picking that thing up off there which is Jeff McNeil and his time here in Queens so Mets fans I definitely want to know your thoughts on this because if you're wondering what do the Mets do if they part ways with Jeff McNeil whether they eat a good portion of his contract to say a team like the Mariners that could use a second baseman like him by the deadline or the offseason. It's not easy to part ways with that contract. It is easy for Steve Cohen to eat dead money, though. He's done that plenty since becoming an owner, so I'm not concerned there. And for whatever is the best thing for the club is what Steve Cohen, the Mets, are going to try to do here, especially for Jeff McNeil, who simply just doesn't have a future as our second baseman. We all know that. He was never going to finish his tenure here with this contract. I didn't think it for one second, even when the Mets initially signed him a year and a half, two years ago or so now. But... Now getting into the big thing. Okay, if Jeff McNeil's out, Jose Iglesias is just a stopgap option. What is the long-term vision here? And that is Luis Angel Acuna and Jet Williams. Take your pick. Luis Angel has been up and down so far this season in AAA. He's really turned things on over the past couple weeks. He's a speed demon. Defense is strong when he is right, but he has plenty more work to do. And he's far more of a contact in that best Gap to gap hitter. He doesn't have the home run power like his star studded brother and Ronald Acuna Jr., as we know. Luis Angel is more of the contact. Kane, similar to McNeil in that aspect, but far more versatile, far more athletic in their respective careers. Not that Jeff isn't an athlete, but there's more speed, there's more dynamic ability on the base pass for Mets team that struggle mightily with their base running this season, unless they're really playing a piss poor team that has no approach that's like them, where they know how to run on them every single time to second, third base, and then even at times home. All I know is Luis Angel Cunha. He will be getting his opportunity at some point this season, I assure you. Whether that's before or after the deadline, we'll soon find out. And Jet Williams, the only reason why he's not a further emphasis in this conversation, at least for this season, is because he had a second quarter zone shot. He's still trying to ramp his way back and try to avoid potential more serious surgery to that wrist. So all I know is Jet Williams is an absolute stud of a top prospect for the Mets, but he's still on the outside looking in for when we can see him make an impact for the Mets at any point in the season versus a Luis Angel Cunha, who has already done some early groundwork to at least warrant that pure athleticism alone be more of a lightning rod than what you can get with Jeff McNeil. Do I want us to rush prospects? No. That's why Jose Iglesias has been called up after the Mets had their trials and tribulations with the schmucks that are Joey Wendell and Zach Short, and there's a reason why those things didn't work out. But the same reason why those things didn't work out is also why David Stearns was cutthroat with them, something Billy Upper would certainly wouldn't do, going out of his way to save face with a Daniel Volgaback one-sided Colin Holderman trade, trying to make Vogue in the lap as much as humanly possible, even though he took more pitches than even I would, standing in the box per se, for strike three, looking. Um, that was the big problem between Buck and Epler, as we know, a complete polar opposite dynamic between Mr. Uh, Carlos Mendoza and David Stearns. A dynamic is like no other. They're going to continue to build this relationship. They're going to feed off of each other. And I can tell you this array from what Andy Martino of SNY has said recently, too. And this holds true. Carlos Mendoza has been a massive driver behind some of these abrupt immediate changes. And even though that David Stearns is the one pulling the strings, it's those little things like Omar Narvaez being cut before Alvarez returns to pick up a Luis Torrens for a 
$100,000 when Terenz gives you more production than what Omar Narvaez ever did for you throughout a year plus span when Terenz has been here for quite literally a week. Again, talk about bargain. That is David Stearns over giving $8 million to a guy with another Billy Epler disaster class. Mets fans, I want to hear your thoughts. I want to hear your breakdown on Jeff McNeil and his continued underwhelming play. When do you think he will be parted with and for what? How certain do you think that this will happen for a guy that still has multiple years of control on his contract? And overall, what is your thoughts on Jeff McNeil and his, again, tumultuous tenure as a New York Metropolitan? Let's keep it a buck. There's been ups and there have certainly been downs. We are in the heart of the downs right now. Will things crawl back up? Will we get up that roller coaster before we drop off again? Or are things going to stay down low where it appears that they may, in fact, stay? Let me hear it all in the comments. Thank you all so much for watching. Hit that like and subscribe button on your way out for your boy. And stay tuned for consistent coverage on all things Mets all season and off season long. We got you covered. We're going to be doing a series preview for the London matchup between the Mets and the Phillies sometime this Friday. Friday at the time recording this barring any changes we'll be having post game coverage after each game of that series along with each day after every Mets game all season long thank you guys all so much and as always no matter what let's go Mets baby peace out